How big is your down payment? Size doesn't matter, and that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about section two of the real estate purchase contract. All right. And what I is have section to have two? Pulled up here. Yes. Read it. Talks, it. it talks about the purchase price. I'm not going to read it all the way, okay. but we're going to talk about different pieces. It talks about the purchase price and how that's broken out between earnest money, additional earnest money, a new loan. You might want to talk to somebody like the lender and seller financing and then the balance uh, at cash, uh, balancing cash at settlement. Okay, yeah, that's the purchase price. And then we're also going to talk about the sale of the buyer's property. So yeah. there we go. So here's the crazy thing. In section 2.2, you, you say we're buying it for this. And then in this contract, you're disclosing, you're supposed to disclose what the loan's going to look like. Problem is, is like I got borrowers that make you have FHA, no idea what their loans they make conventional. Like. Well, let's go back to the contract. So it says that we're purchasing, let's just say what, $500,000 home? I like you sure. numbers. Okay. I do. So I'm going to put that in. Five, the, five the first thousand. box, there's a box and it says $500,000. That's what we're buying this home for. Then it comes down into the next earnest line money. and it says earnest money, which is what we just oh. talked about in section one. Let's put 2%, 10 grand. Yep. Okay. Got it. 10 grand. Okay. Then it comes down to the next one. Additional earnest money. And on this contract, we're not doing any. Okay. okay. So, so no, no, no additional We'll talk about that money. later in section eight. Okay. Okay. The next one is new loan. And what does it read there? So new loan says the buyer may apply for a mortgage loan financing or the loan on terms acceptable to the buyer. Okay. Okay. So we have to talk to the lender. We have to have a good idea about how much these buyers can afford to put down. And we we need to know from the lender at least some ballpark of what that's going to be. Which is interesting in the market like right right now. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting a $500 offer on a home right now, this could be listed at 470, 450, mm-hmm. 490. Yeah, it could be over the price yes. of what it's actually listed at. Yeah. So, and then you're gonna say, well, you know, we're putting 10 grand down earnest money. All in all, they're coming in with 5%, and so they're gonna come in with another 3% at closing. But then my appraisal comes back at 470. Now they've gotta come in with 30,000 to cure the difference between what right. they're buying it for and the appraised value. And then I'm doing a loan and now my borrowers don't have enough to put the 20% down. So they're gonna do 5% down with a 30 grand to cure. Okay. And now your purchase contract's wrong. So what you just did went like this. Not to me, but to a lot of other that. agents and clients out there because that's all needs to be, well, supposed to be described right there. But it can't be because this is done before we even get to You're the appraisal offer. and all you know this other cool. stuff. They haven't even accepted it. You're writing right, an exactly. offer. You're supposed no, to know how the loan's offer. going down. You can't. You but don't need to. But here's the phrase, the get out of jail free card says this. Any amounts shown in section 2.1 C or E, which is the new loan and cash at close, right? Uh, may be adjusted as deemed necessary by the buyer and the lender. The lender. The lender. So right there, honestly, those numbers don't matter. Here's the problem. Well, they do. It's like it's like an ethical thing because exactly this is this is I'm buying a five hundred thousand dollar house and I'm going to bring in ten thousand earnest money right. and I'm going to put down another two hundred thousand. Two hundred. That's going to make a strong offer. It is, yeah. and they're coming in with two hundred ten thousand small loan amount. Now, and at yeah. this time, this could actually happen. Of this client says, "Yeah, I got two hundred grand to put down this. Okay, let's do this." Then we go through and we look at it. We get this under contract. The seller sees it and goes, "Hey, dude, this is a great offer. We have this. They're coming in two hundred. He's got a big yeah. down payment. Yeah, big down Just payment. because of a down payment, the lender." now gets further into the process because we actually get it under contract with dates because we can't lock in rates until we know when the dates are because what if the dates are four months out? You're not going right. to lock in a Let rate. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. So the lender didn't do a good job. The client said they had 300000 they were going to put down. Fact of the matter is 150000 of that is in a safe and not acceptable funds for down payment. Yeah. It's in cash. Can't do it. Why? 
you're non-documentable. You can't show that that was the client's money, that there's not another loan. Because so now it's a rules to change. and laws for lending. For, this yeah, isn't just yeah. Jason's. It has to do with fraud. Fraud. And yeah. Avoiding it. We, exactly. don't want to, we don't want to allow fraud. We don't want to put the lender in a position where he may be committing fraud or where fraud is being committed by someone else and he's going to be the victim of this fraud. Yeah. So, so you got situations where it's, it's going to change. And, and it was set up to the best of your knowledge, honest. Right. So, because we have legal and ethical, and here's a really good case where you can set it up legally. Mm-hmm. You can write down in this contract, you know, this is what's going to happen. They're going to put $200,000 down. But what if you know that they can't? So you're writing a super strong offer as an agent. But you know that they can't actually deliver. Okay. Well, it's you can't. Well, but again, you can't it's not the only way you can say that there. is if you 100% know. And yeah, the client says, and put, for the most down. part, there's always a 99% chance, or there's a 1% chance. Well, that that's acting know. in good faith. I agree. You but, know, and, right. and, and yeah. but until the lender can actually verify where all this stuff's coming from and doing everything, and in today's market with things moving so fast and yeah. doing stuff. You physically may not have had time to do something while we're getting a client in under contract. Or you didn't understand what the lender said. So now you have a legal, unethical thing because you get your offer accepted because they think that you've got that money to cure the deficiency Mm -hmm. on the low appraised value versus the purchase price. So the borrower thinks he's getting a half million for his $450,000 home. This is a great deal. The seller. Mm -hmm. Seller thinks they're getting a great deal. When in actuality, this contract is going to be canceled because the borrower really doesn't have that much money to put down. And when it comes to the financing deadline, but, they're but gone. This is the thing that I want. I know we want sellers, agents, and clients to understand and know of. The deal still may happen. The seller's still going to net the same amount of money. What does it matter if he pays zero down or $200,000 down. Right. When, Honestly, what does it matter? If the end purchase price is the same amount and you're trying to present a strong offer to your sellers, the down payment, it states in the contract that it can be changed at any point yeah. by the lender and the client. But here's the problem. I've seen offers rejected because they put TBD yeah, it's in the new loan to yeah. be determined, which is as honest as you can get. That's the most honest you can be, but ultimately, we've seen it as well. If you put TBD in there, um, you're going to get rejected, especially in this crazy seller's market. So it creates actually, ironically, well, a weird ethical challenge for buyers to be like, well, could, could you possibly, potentially, you know, if you beg, borrowed, and steal and stole something, you know, could you get two hundred thousand dollars on the table gift but funds yes. here's the thing i want to come i just keep wanting to come back to it doesn't matter agents need to stop dismissing a down payment as a strong offer it means nothing and that is exactly which is actually yeah. we're actually trying to get that actually taken out and removed from the contract because it doesn't matter it doesn't create any less or more of a strong of a con of of that contract, the earnest money and additional earnest money that those, makes a difference. Yeah, those those make a create difference. a yeah. very strong offer because they create leverage in the deal. Yeah, exactly. The down and payment the, actually the, the total leverage. purchase price, because then you have all these other contingencies and stuff that we can eliminate further on in the contract that we can talk about later. But the earnest money and additional earnest money, that's what is guaranteed or can be guaranteed to that seller if the buyer's default for their $200,000. If I have $1,000 earnest money, but I'm bringing $200,000 down. What difference? Or I have somebody with $20,000 earnest money and bringing zero down. Which Which is better offer? Who's the better offer? There's a lot out there that are dismissing the zero downs without thinking about it. Right. So there's one more section here that we need to talk about. This yeah, part this of is the other two. thing where actually I get asked a lot of times to commit mortgage fraud. All right, so section 2.2 states you've got to sell a property to get the new property. And this is bound financially, like so they can meet the debt to income ratio of the loan or so they can secure the down payment or a mixture of both. Right. But what I get asked to do is like, can they afford two houses? You know, can they make the payments on both? Or most recently, um, 
let's refinance their current house so they have the down payment to buy a new one so I don't have to say they have to sell a house so my offer looks stronger. Like, will it work? Here's the thing. <laughs> if, if it works, it works. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But are they going to lease their house? Are they going to sell their house? Because often cases, like if they have funds for down payment and they just need to offset the monthly payment, they can lease it. And now it's no longer subject to sale. Yeah. as long as they get the lease set up. So mm -hmm. this is another one where it's always good to call the lender who did the pre-approval and say, on, on what terms is this given? On like what, what things need to happen? Yeah. Are there extenuating circumstances? Because like crazy thing is, story of like, is it convenient? Mm -hmm. Can they afford two houses? Yes. Will they have a place to live? Do they want to go straight from one house to the other? This isn't like a convenience thing. This is a, will the loan work? Will the down payment work? Right. And that's a nuance that's not always understood, especially, you know, once you get under contract and somebody goes, well, actually I have this other house, you know? This is a huge deal why using professionals matters because the words in the contract are very specific and they have their meaning and that's where it ends. Yeah, that's where well, it stops. And and the other side of it is if your agent cares about you too, they shouldn't jump all over. If Tyler comes over and says, hey, Eric, I want you to sell my house. I think I can clear like 300,000 on it because I bought it 12 years ago. And I'm like, sweet, let's get this thing on the market. And that's all this agent sell is thinking house, about. Sell house, sell house, Instead sell of saying, hey, Tyler, where are you gonna go? Can you afford the next house? Where, where's, yeah. where's, where's that at? Where are you moving? Are you living with a family member? Where, where are you going? I'll, well, I don't know. I haven't, I'll just get a loan later. Cool. That agent needs to talk to him and say, hey, before we even sell your house, you need to talk to a lender to see if you can buy the house that you want to go into. So then we know where those funds are gonna go to. Because if you, if I sell your house and you take 300 grand, mm -hmm. Tyler, you're gonna go out and buy like a fancy computer. <laughs> Dude, hey. three hundred thousand dollars computer <laughs> that will burn a that hole in your so pocket. Awesome. Yes. Okay. I don't and know then if that's true where about Tyler, <laughs> maybe you can get some just for men for your hair or something. But oh, wow. at least we're taking hair. stats. That's <laughs> true. I do have a couple more she mogs. Yeah, I, I buy like the uh, company. That, the company. Thousand she -mogs. that would happen. Yes. Uh, and then there goes your down payment gone and well, now you're moving back in with your parents let's not even hit if he's got a hole burning in his money burn a hole in his pocket mm -hmm. i have uh people come to me all the time that want to upgrade mm -hmm. say i'm going to sell my this house because i can get bank for it and i say what kind of house do you want to afford and they're like well so i'm selling my my four hundred fifty thousand. i want to mm -hmm. be six hundred thousand right right now that's happening i'll have this much for a down payment but the thing is is it still an increase in payment. Mm -hmm. They got their home a while ago, they owe 98,000 on it. So yeah, they have a buttload of equity, but they can't afford the house that they want. It just doesn't work. They don't realize what the payment is. Well, and then they realize that they should just stay where they're at. Yeah. And that's honestly where a good agent comes into it of, they're not out there for the sale, they're out there for the client and helping that client make educated decisions by giving them information. Helping them understand and, their options. Yeah. And helping them make a plan. Ultimately, this is about making a plan. Even making an offer like this, we're saying we have a plan and we would like to move into your house. And we organize our plan with intelligent professionals so we know what we're doing. That's what we're doing when we make an yep. offer. If you just write off an offer and go, kick it off, we're good. There's a pretty good chance that offer is gonna get rejected. Even if it gets under contract, you're gonna end up that, there could that be buyer's remorse. Die. There could yeah. be all sorts of stuff. Yeah. So what'd you learn today? Well, my key takeaway was that in 2.2, it talks about the contingency of a buyer to sell the property. It's only contingent on the financial aspect, the down payment and the, the capability to qualify for a loan. It's important to know that section 2.1 C and E can be changed by the lender at will. And remember to use an agent that has your best interests at heart. Hey, now that you know about purchase price and that size doesn't matter in the down payment, let's talk some more. Leave a comment down below, message us, like, subscribe, share this with your friends.
controlling myself. <laughs> yeah, someone else needs to clap. There we are. So today, uh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> So this section 2.2, so that was 2.1, mm-hmm. 2.1, yeah. three. Um, so uh, the sellers were saying, no, you defaulted now. It's important. Crap, what's my line? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea even what mine is. Okay, and then I will say, oh, remember, remember. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that you need to use an agent who has a red jacket. <laughs> use an agent who has You should have done that while I danced. You're a little late. Size doesn't matter. That's oh what we're talking about today. <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> hey, what are we talking about today? <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs>